With the Zmodeler brush selected, hover over a poly and press spacebar to open up the Zmodeler poly menu. Locate the Insert Poly Loops action. With the Insert Poly Loops action selected, you'll notice you have a series of targets here and then a series of modifiers to control the actual action. To start off, underneath the target area, let's select Poly Loop. When hovering over a poly, you'll notice that you get a visual line. This visual line will determine which way the poly loop will be generated. So if I have the line going vertical like so, the poly loop will be generated in a vertical fashion. If I have the line oriented horizontally like this, the poly loop will be generated in a horizontal fashion. So to apply the action, just simply click, and you will notice that you will get an edge inserted into the center of that poly loop. If I undo that process, and now instead of just clicking, but rather click and drag in a vertical fashion, you'll notice that I will get an increasing number of edge loops. While doing this process, if I go left and right instead of vertical, I will also get a bevel effect that will be applied directly around that poly loop. This will allow you to create nice rounded surfaces. So if I undo that, and now let's hover over poly again and hit spacebar to go back into the poly Z modeler menu. Now let's select the target a single poly. So now instead of actually applying this insert poly loop across that entire poly loop of the model, it's only going to apply a poly loop to this single poly. Now with this function, if I just simply click, you'll notice that I get an edge generated directly in the middle of that poly, and then ZBrush has generated on the extents of that actual edge two areas of the mesh that will actually terminate the actual edge to triangles. So this allows you to come through and just insert poly loops where you actually need them and then ZBrush will automatically terminate them to keep the rest of the mesh clean. Now if I go back into the menu here, we were just doing the interactive split option. Well if I didn't want those triangles at the end, I can change this to even splits and this will not generate those triangles. So if I come and do insert a poly loop now, you'll notice that ZBrush has kept these external corners here all quads. So this will allow you to come through and make full quadded geometry instead of generating triangles. Now the same process will allow you to interactively add more splits as needed. So if I hover over this poly loop here and just click and drag, you'll notice that it will also increase the amount of loops that are generated. Um, you also have an option for a specific split count. So if I wanted six actual edge loops generated, I can just come through and now just clicking once will generate six edges along that actual poly there. There's also a few other modifiers down here. So the loops mode was the one we we're just using. We can also do a grid mode. So clicking on the poly here will now generate a grid along that poly you have selected. And then ZBrush will now terminate the actual grid options there to the extents or the connecting polys that are associated with that initial face. There's also the option for a sunburst mode and clicking on this will generate a sunburst pattern instead of the actual grid or the actual loop function and give you a centralized point. This centralized point works really well with the actual split point option so you can come through and now generate nice circular shapes on your model without distorting the rest of the topology. And finally, you have the option to toggle how the poly groups will be generated. So by default, if I turn grid mode back on and have alternate poly group on, when I click, you'll notice I'll get a different poly group for wherever these grid lines overlap. If I undo that and now come down here to same poly group and now applying that same process again, you'll notice that the poly group will be constant across that entire surface. So changing these modifiers down here will allow you to come through and just add geometry to specific parts of your model or maybe even come through and find specific details or design elements that you can then use the QMesh action on or other processes to deform the mesh.